Let's be honest, USB-C is kind of a nightmare. Sure, one day we might get to the point where every cable, every gadget, every screen uses the same next generation connector, but we're nowhere near that point today. Which means if you've got a new USB-C laptop, like a MacBook Pro or Dell's latest XPS 13, and you want to use those old ports from your old computer, stuff like regular USB, HDMI, Ethernet, DisplayPort, SD, microSD, all those old connectors that you used to use every day, you're gonna need a USB-C hub. To be clear, for the sake of this comparison, we're only looking at a small subset of USB-C hubs. That means that we're only talking about ones that offer some sort of pass-through power so that you can keep charging your computer while you're using other stuff, and ones that don't need their own integrated power supply. That means, unfortunately, all those super cool $300 Thunderbolt 3 hubs are out. The best USB-C hub should have all the ports you need while still being thin and light enough to keep in your bag at all times. It shouldn't be too expensive, and it should work reliably without getting too hot. The Satechi Aluminum Multiport Adapter V2 manages to check almost every box on the list, and it's our pick for the USB-C hub for most people. First and foremost, Satechi's hub had the best port selection of any of the hubs that we tested in this price point. There are three USB 3.0 ports, both microSD and SD card slots, HDMI, Ethernet, and a USB-C port for power pass-through. The hub itself is a compact aluminum hub that doesn't take up too much room in your bag or on your desk. And despite the all-metal construction, didn't get any hotter than my normal laptop charger during use. The port layout is also one of the better designs that we've seen on any of these hubs. One end has the single USB-C cable to plug into your laptop, the other end has the USB-C input for power and Ethernet. One side of the wedge has the SD card slots, and the other side has the USB 3.0 ports and the HDMI port. And most importantly, everything is spaced far enough that it's always easy to plug stuff in. The Satechi Hub isn't quite perfect. It only offers 49 watts for pass-through charging, and 4K video only works at 30 hertz, not 60 hertz. Plus, the $80 price tag might be a little hard to swallow, especially if you're someone who just spent thousands of dollars on a new USB-C laptop. But for a well-designed portable hub with the port selection that this offers, nothing else came close at this price point. If you're looking to save a little money, the next best option is the Hutu USB-C hub. It's got the same three USB 3.0 ports, a full-size SD card slot, and HDMI for video out. There's no Ethernet or microSD, but at almost half the price of the Satechi hub, it's a great budget option, assuming you can get by without an Ethernet port, which might be a deal breaker for some folks. The Hutu hub does feel a little cheap compared to the Satechi, despite also being made out of aluminum, and there's just no getting around the giant glowing Hutu logo on top. But that's nothing that some electrical tape can't fix if it really bothers you. Now, there are plenty of other USB-C hubs out there with different port configurations, price points, and form factors. They'll all probably get the job done in a pinch, but for one reason or another, they didn't top our best picks. The Aki 8-in-1 USB-C hub had the second best port selection of any of the hubs that we tested, but it weirdly chooses to cluster all the ports at like one end of the device, which makes it kind of hard to plug things in. Also, you can only use the SD card slot or the micro SD card slot, but not both of them at the same time. But the Aki Hub makes up for one of its shortcomings by swapping one of the USB ports for a VGA port, which is useful if you need the connectivity options. VGA isn't that common of a port these days, but if you need it, the Aki Hub is definitely your best bet. If you want something a little more premium, there's the Borge Design Arc Hub. It doesn't quite match up to the port selection on some of our other picks, and at $135, it's the most expensive hub that we looked at. But it's also far nicer than some of the other hubs, with a removable USB-C cable, a weighted metal base that doesn't slide around, and a premium glass and aluminum design that felt just much nicer than some of the other picks. On the other end of the spectrum, there's a few things that you should avoid when you're buying a USB-C hub. Stuff like Apple's official USB-C digital AV multiport adapter, which, while you might think might be a great option because the Apple name actually offered one of the slowest pass-through charging rates of any of the things we tested. It also worked the least well with things that weren't Mac computers, and at $70, it only offers a single USB port and an HDMI port. There's plenty other options that'll give you more bang for your buck. I'd also caution against any hubs like the HyperDrive Solo, which connects directly to your computer. I get the appeal here. They're pretty much designed for Apple's new MacBooks and MacBook Pros. They clip directly onto the computer, they're color coordinated to match, and it looks like they might feel that hole that Apple's removal of the ports might have left in your life. But they also felt incredibly flimsy when attached to my computer, and I was constantly afraid that they were just gonna snap off or damage the ports. At the end of the day, 
Almost any functional USB-C hub will probably get the job done for connecting your old gadgets to your new devices. And hopefully this whole product category will be a pretty short-lived thing because in an ideal world, everyone will just switch over to using USB-C. So we won't ever need USB-C hubs. But until that happens, the Satechi is probably still your best bet for getting by in this crazy mixed up port standard world. Hey, thanks for watching. We just launched a new science channel and you should go definitely check it out at youtube.com slash verge science.